Hey what's up guys welcome to another video in which we are going to learn about java buffered reader class with the help of examples and we are going to see file handling example in this case so guys buffered reader class is one of the sub classes of the reader super class that we have seen previously now the buffered reader class of the java io package can be used with other readers to read data in terms of characters so guys we had already seen buffered input stream in which we were reading the data in terms of bytes over there but in buffered reader we can read the data in terms of characters more efficiently guys this is very important because this is one of the most efficient class that you can use in order to read data from console or else the external file as well so let us check the working of the buffered reader now the buffered reader maintains an inter internal buffer of 8192 characters so basically it has an internal buffer of 8192 bytes now during the read operation in the buffered reader a chunk of characters is read from the disk and stored in the internal buffer so guys this is the main functionality of the buffered reader due to which it is more efficient than other readers basically a chunk of characters is read from the disk and stored in the internal buffer and from the internal buffer characters are read individually so this is why the number of communication to the disk is reduced and this is the secret that buffered reader is more efficient the number of communication to the disk is reduced when we are using the buffered reader so this is why reading characters is faster using buffered reader so guys let us check this with the help of examples over here so in eclipse id we can directly use the buffered reader class over here so when we type buffered reader as you can see buffered reader is getting suggested in the eclipse id and over here i will say br as the object name for this buffered reader followed by equal to and then we have new operator and then we have buffered reader class over here as the constructor and for the constructor part we are going to create a file reader object so we can directly put a new file reader over here guys this is because we cannot provide the file name over here directly by using the directory path so we have to use one of the classes from the reader class so it is file reader that we are using over here now guys as you can see file reader over here we have the third constructor which takes the file name as the parameter so we are going to provide the file name inside this file reader class so inside the double quotes again i will go to my directory and over here i have three files so the first file is java tutorial which is having the content of the tutorial for the java programming language over here we have the output file which we had created in the previous video while using the writer class and over here we have something called as test file so guys the content of the test file is something like this we have this is a test line in a test file and this is another test line so this is what we are going to read by using the buffered reader class object now guys one change i will do over here is i will get this second statement on the second line of this notepad file and then we will have a full stop over here let me just save this file now guys i'll close this file and i'll copy this directory path over here so let me just copy this and i'll paste this inside the file reader parameter so i have pasted this over here and then we have the name of the file that is test file dot txt so guys this is the name that is test file and that is the same name that i have given over here in the path now guys we are getting a red underline over here that's because we have to handle the exception over here so it says add throws declaration as the first option so i have provided the throws declaration over here now guys the important thing how do we read the file now how do we read the content of the file so by using this object so let me just use this object over here followed by dot and then we have multiple methods over here as you can see now one of the most important method which was not present in the previous reader classes is this read line method which will help us in order to read a particular string within the file so guys basically this will read one line at a time so let me just put this read line over here but this will return a string so we need to have a string variable as well which will take that data by using this read line method so what i will do is i will provide a string over here we will say string data it is equal to br dot read line now guys we are getting a red underline that's because we have to handle the exception so i'll simply select the first option that is add throws declaration over here so we have the throws io exception now guys as you can see there are no more errors br dot read line it will read the first line over here so if i open this file once again this first line will be read into the data string that we have defined over here as you can see string data it is equal to br dot read line now guys let us print this data now so how do we print this we will simply provide the print statement so we have print ln and we'll say the first 
line followed by colon and then i will say data over here and so guys in this way using these three lines of code you can easily read any data from any particular file that you want to read based on your requirements so guys let me just save this file and try running this code now so as you can see it says the first line that is this is test line in a test file so basically this read line it is just reading one line at a time so if you have the requirement of just reading one line you can use the buffered reader which is one of the most efficient readers in order to read the file and read the first line from the file but guys what if i want to read the entire content that is the second line as well and the actual scenario will be reading all the lines from the file so guys basically it is very rare that you will have only two lines over here in a particular file you can have thousands of lines as well so how we can read all those thousands of lines in a file so basically what we have to do is we have to provide this particular line of code in a while loop so i will simply modify this code now over here i'll just provide the command and then what i will do is let's say i want to first declare the string that is data and then it is not containing anything so it is a blank string over here now guys we have to use the while loop now why do we use the while loop because continuously we have to read the lines by using the br dot read line method so over here inside this while loop what we will do is we will say br dot read line method so we are using the read line method over here and we can check whether it is not equal to null so when we provide not equal to null it will check whether the next line that is read is it containing some data or not and if it is containing some data it will go inside the loop and if it is null which means there is no more data in the file then it will come out of the loop now guys what we will do is over here inside the while loop i will say data it is equal to br dot read line over here and then we can have this print statement over here so i'll just cut this line of code from here and i'll provide inside the while loop over here now guys what i will do is i will just remove this content that is the first line because we are going to read the entire content of the file and now let me just save this file and try running this code now so as you can see this is another test line now guys this is the second line that is coming over here what happened to the first line that is this is a test line in a test file that is not being printed over here that's because guys we have already wasted one read line method over here in order to check whether the content is null or not so basically we did not print that and the next time that the control flow checks this that is br dot read line the control flow in the file already went to the next line by reading the first file in the first instance of the read line so what we have to do is inside this condition only we have to provide a data it is equal to br dot read line and then this part that is data it is equal to br dot read line we have to enclose within the brackets so over here i'll open and close the brackets so what is happening over here is first the control flow is coming over here data it is equal to br dot read line so it is going to read the first line and it will assign it to the data and then the control flow will check whether this particular data is equal to null or not if it is not equal to null then it will go inside the while loop and now we have to remove this part because this line of code is being already executed over here so guys this is one of the efficient way we can provide the assignment of the data over here within the condition inside the while parenthesis and now we simply have to print the data after reading the line one at a time inside our file so guys let me just save this file now and try running this code so as you can see now the first line is coming that is this is a test line in a test file this is another test line now guys it depends on your file the content of your file will be read and displayed over here so let me just add some more lines over here this is line and then i'll say this is another line over here and then we have full stop now let me just save this file now and after i come over here let me just run this file once again so as you can see all the four lines that is the content of the file is getting printed over here so guys in this way using only four to five lines of code you can easily read the entire content of the file so guys practice on your own so that on different inputs you get different outputs guys apart from this there are many other methods inside the buffered reader object so as you can see after providing br and then dot we have different methods that can be used in order to manipulate or read the data from a particular file 
file. So guys, that's it in this video. Please make sure that you like this video so that it reaches to more people and subscribe to this channel so that you get the notifications on upcoming videos as well. The next video that we are going to talk about is Java Buffered Writer class with the help of examples. So stay tuned.